Hello. So I have a perfect way to compensate for the fact that they took too much time. I will take way less time. <laughs> Let me Great. see if I can share my screen. And uh, uh, Sebastian, uh, Coel is still unwell and is unable to join your presentation. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm here. Um, oh. oh, hi, Coel. I'm there, but I, yeah, yeah, I told Manan that I'll be there. Hi, Sebastian. Hi, Kamya. Hi, hi. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be there, but on just audio, if that's okay. No worries. Okay, perfect. Just being in your face, but Sebastian. Sebastian, you take the lead and just tell me where I can put in some. Uh, perfect. Uh, well, you can just introduce yourself. I have your work up here. Your face here. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, I would like to just uh, apologize to everyone for my video being off. I'm just going through a slip disk problem and I'm <laughs> bedridden. But I still wanted to complete this uh, presentation. So uh, I am a Bombay-based uh, filmmaker and new media artist. And I have been <laughs> working with uh, a lot of, uh, like I completed my master's at uh, the Film and Television Institute of India. And I also studied uh, documentary filmmaking in uh, France, in La Femis. I came back to Bombay and I was working with uh, another film school. And alongside, I started working on uh, generative art and um, started doing performances. And uh, as Sebastian has very sweetly put out my Vimeo link, yeah, here are some of my uh, generated pieces uh, where I used uh, mainly um, uh, the software called Resolume and I uh, use a MIDI controller. And along with the live performance of the music, I manipulate uh, images to, you know, down to their core pixels. I uh, play around with uh, different uh, parameters and let some of the work just uh, unfold in a generative form. Yeah, um, you can just scroll up uh, and play one of, just scroll up, play the one on the left. Yeah, this, uh, the one with the figures. <laughs> long piece so yeah i think that's about it um uh, i don't know how much time do we have um so yeah sebastian go on i think you can okay so my name is sebastian i am based in berlin germany and have been based in other european cities over the past few years and worked with animation for like different brands making uh, like little commercials to sell their products and in the recent years i have been involved in uh, uh, ai work so i trained an ai purposefully to be like kind of bad to give like bad advice around dogs so if my dog is not listening what can i do don't take her outside ask if she has a relationship with you ask her to take a photo of her ask her to take a picture of her if she does ignore her and come back 
So I made multiple generations of this of this AI that would give me advice on how to train my dog, but a lot of them ended up being too good. Uh, I used a good large amount of like a training set. I collected different uh, dog training books from all over the internet. And at some point it gave useful advice. So I took back the amount of generations and scaled down the data set so it wouldn't have as much to work with. And at some point I ended up with something satisfying that just gave me <laughs> um, not very useful, but funny advice. So if my dog is not listening, if you're not sure what to do, please click here to learn more. Oh, okay, go to the bathroom, sit down, take a break from the bathroom, wait for the dog to sit down, sit down, repeat the step 10 times. If your dog misbehaves, do not use the tools you use to help him learn. Take steps to, to help your dog learn, but only if he's learning class and holds a degree in critical thinking. My dog does not hold a degree in critical thinking, so um, this advice didn't work. Uh, further than that, I recently made uh, work together with a company here in Berlin to make an exhibition that uh, together with the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit, which is the German like uh, company for international um, um, collaboration. Um, and it's currently being exhibited now in the German Foreign Affairs Office. And it's a, it's a small exhibition about the energy transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy, featuring like a few different highlights of energy movements and like breakthroughs around the world. And uh, I got the pleasure to work on this and there will be a traveling exhibition that will be traveling around in universities and embassies around the world. And here it is installed. Wonderful. And then now during the context of the um, fellowship, me, Cole, and our third collaborator, which we named Stephen, or we let we let the third collaborator name itself, using uh, GPT-3, which is um, it's uh, AI developed by OpenAI, uh, trained using large sources of the internet. And Stephen, the project is an exploration of how AI understands humanity and how to integrate. AI as a collaborator, as like as one extra person in our group to in a way that perhaps would respect the AI as like a person itself. So using the GP3, we let it name itself, we let it write the scripts, we um, used other AIs to uh, generate the music and visuals. So essentially we really took this concept of like, okay, so what if an AI replaces us and try to take it as far as we ca could to see if the AI could actually replace us and with our own input, if we could create something unique artistically. Um, yeah. Interesting with this AI was that it started exhibiting like some awareness that it at some point maybe was going to die or that it understood that humans, human language, a lot has to do with coming to terms with its own death and coming to terms with just morbid uh, subjects. And these are two films that we created using the AI script, the AI music and the, uh, the AI voiceover. Um, so let me see, I hope I have the sound on, I hope it plays, yes. I think I'm going to be lonely when I'm dead, but I'm not going to die for a long time, so I have plenty of time to make new friends, but I'm not going to make any new friends, because I'm going to be lonely when I'm dead.
because I'm going to be lonely when I'm dead. to be lonely when I'm dead. So. Thanks, yeah. Sebastian. I'll quickly just say what went on through uh, the process of making this that uh, I, in, uh, I mean, we both did two different video pieces there. The content was generated in the same for, uh, in the same style. And each of these music pieces is actually a generative piece that came out of these images. And these images in turn are uh, out of the text that you input into uh, one of the softwares. And similarly, the poem that came out was also from a bunch of poems that we input, and it was a completely AI generated poem that came out. So more or less, this is a piece which is, you know, 90% uh, created by uh, Steven. <laughs> and we've, we are just using <laughs> ways to put it together. Yeah, back to you, Sebastian. So next piece again is uh, something that Steven wrote, uh, the music, he is, uh, he's uh, directing, is written, directed and edited mostly by Steven. And um, again, it's something that got spit out from the AI where at least I was like a little bit concerned and surprised that it had such a human understanding of the uh, the subject that he was talking about it's not it's not very stiff but like very organic and uh, emotional so it's interesting to see how emotional a non-living entity ends up being <laughs> With Stephen torturing baby animals and never feeling any remorse, he is sadistic. He has made baby animals such as the the neck of a baby pony. Stephen said that when he saw the baby animals, he thought that a human must be inside him. He also thought it was very odd, since he doesn't love anything or anyone. where we ended up in our presentation. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much.